you can be uh, how do you say that uh, um, uh, you, can you can participate in an advertising in commercial advertising oh Promote, I can yes promoting uh, food or something because you're tempting me <laughs> you have tem tempted me. Would you like this cup of tea? This is delicious green tea that you get from the United States of America. There's nothing like American tea. <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, the Japanese who sent me this, you know, via my, my uh, nephew, would beg to differ. I was just thinking, um, Mauricio, have you ever had a, um, a class with Zachary Butterfield? Yes, uh, twice. Okay, twice. good. You know, he's an artist. He, he yeah. actually is trying to make it professionally. Beautiful we, art. I don't know if he's good enough, but, but you know, he's very dedicated to it, and that's quite enough. Okay. Well, hi, everybody. I am so glad you're here. Uh, let's see. We have in the class Fariza, we have Farkan, we have Manel, we have Mauricio, Mustafa, Rashid, and Zinyu. Very good. Uh, Milani, I posted the link again in case you wanted to join. And Manel, I'm very sorry I'm making you hungry. I'm just going to be drinking <laughs> okay. the tea, okay? Is that all right? Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. Well, let's go ahead and pick up where we left off two weeks ago. Um, and that is we had our wonderful discussion class. And uh, I, I did very little, <laughs> which is the way I like these classes. You did everything. And... Uh, Manel and Furkan got together and put it all down, and um, you guys had asked me to take a look at it, but, and Zinyu, I don't know if Bluetooth can be used or not, I, I just don't know, uh, to edit it, and I figure it would be a much better opportunity to set up a class like this so we can um, work on it together, and you can have a better feel for English composition. This is also what I envision to be just the beginning. Um, we've got our core who started this, and that's for Khan and Manel and Mauricio, Masafa and Zinya. But, and I'd like to see us creating more and more stories and developing more and more stories as new friends come in, such as Farisa and Eduardo. And if Meliani gets her microphone working, that would also be a good thing. Okay? So, questions that you guys have. This is a seminar class, and we're going to be doing a lot of talking. And Mustafa has to go, and that's too bad, but he'll be back. And thank you for opening the room for someone else. Um, questions, anyone? Comments? Mm, about what, sorry? About, about what we're doing today, about what I see us doing in the future? No, no. Well, not for now. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah, and for Ken says, yes, he remembers those stories. The more they become crazy, the harder it'll be to forget. That's the point. <laughs> That's the point. Now, the challenge, can we, can, can we take these, or can you, because I'm just going to sit out here, can you take those crazy stories and turn them into something that other people might be able to read, that other people might like reading as short stories? Think about it. You know, we, you know, we never know, but for now, let's just have some fun. May, may yeah. I say something? Certainly. Uh, I think that uh, we we can <clears throat> we can make up uh, very very crazy stories, but with 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 common sense with uh, with sense. Mm -hmm. uh, with the, yes, do you, do you understand what I'm saying? I, I do, I do. There's some some really good ideas that are in these stories, and you can really put them together into something nice, and and they're nice anyway. So let's let's take that very first one or that second one that you guys did. I'm going to bring it up, and I'm going to start out by uh, maybe identifying some of the errors that are there and as we go along I'm going to ask you guys to come up with perhaps better words better punctuation as the story progresses is that agreeable yes yes okay and what I'd like to do because many of you are going to be saying things at the same time don't say me <laughs> okay <laughs> if uh, I'm good but I'm not that good you can say it's me Manel or me for Khan or, um, you know, me, Eduardo, or Fariza, or whomever, okay? Okay. All right. Let and us... Other, yes. The other word, sorry. Don't say sorry. Yes. Never. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Unless you interrupt someone rudely. Yes, then you're sorry. <laughs> but if you make uh, an error in grammar or composition, that's why you're here. So that's nothing to be sorry about. Okay. Is everyone ready? 
Yes, sir. Yep. Yes. Okay. Uh, Kevin, you didn't do that properly. So what else is new? Okay. Well, I'm not going to start this at the end. I'm going to move up, and I'm going to start this at the beginning. Okay. Let us begin. Now, this first sentence reads, Beautiful Detective Manel rushed into... Should I, can I, should I make this bigger? Please. Yeah. Okay, yeah, that's much better. Good, you can all see it. That's good, I like this. All right. Not Manel, clear. I'm sorry? Not clear, no. It's not clear? No. Okay, let me bring it up a little more. Yeah, it's okay. And oops. Yeah, that's that's not good. All right, I'm sorry. Bear with me here, guys. I think. All right, we're good. We're good. Now let's start out. Um, I shouldn't be the one reading, okay? So, for Ken, let's take a look at this title to start with, okay? Read that. Read that title for me, please. Manel and our friends on the King Without the Face Island. Okay. Pretty long title. Yeah. Um, are you okay with that title? Is that a good title? Everybody? No. No. Okay. <laughs> All right. So that's, this is what we would call a working title. Okay? That title may change. However, as long as it's a working title, let's set it up the way a title should be set up. Okay? Would anyone like to offer some suggestions? Actually, this wasn't our title. Our title was The Everlasting Twist of Arthur. Arthur. Was that the first story or the second story? No, the same story. We changed the, the title. Th you changed the title. Okay, uh -huh. I might actually have that one then. The Everlasting Twist of Arthur. Because this is the one I, I copied directly off the website. Uh, okay. What was the topic's name? Well, well could, could, could I say something? Uh, yeah. I think that we we should read the the story again to have a to 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 have a an idea. Okay. Uh, All right. Idea. Let's let's go ahead and work with this one if you don't mind, because I have it, and this is a good one to start learning from. Okay. So. I'm going to do it the way I'd ordinarily do a class, okay? And I want you to keep in mind as we're doing this uh, what some of the errors might be when we get back to them. So for Khan, I'd like you to go, go ahead, please, with this first paragraph, all right? Manel, and down to scientists. It's normal version. Okay. Beautiful private detective Manel rushed into going the room to understand what was going on. Khan was standing next to a strange vehicle. It was a flying machine. Fukan was eager to share this invention with other scientists. Very good. Manel. Okay. Uh, however, uh, okay, just a minute. However, there was a problem. A part of uh, the machine was not working properly. Properly. Properly, and, yeah. Uh, properly. And uh, that could uh, endanger the flight. Only one man in uh, the world could solve th this problem. He was Professor uh, Mauricio. Mauricio, Mauricio found uh, the broken part and fixed it. Uh, Furkan knew that uh, Mauricio had uh, profound knowledge about these kind kinds of devices. Mauricio became a member of their team. Very good. All right, Mauricio. They got on the plane. Furkan was the captain. Oops. Go ahead. Uh, Furkan was the captain, and he started the engine. While he was aviate, aviating the plane, aviating, Manel, aviating uh, nice word. Aviating the plane, Manel looked outside and thought of her, her husband. She hadn't seen him in five years. Suddenly, Mauricio spotted, spot, spotted a strange thing on the air coming toward them. Manel grabbed a pair of binoculars to make out what it was. It was a guided missile, ready to blow them up. Manel was aware of the, sever of the sever severity of the situation. She found a parachute at the back of the plane and jumped. As, as she jumped out, Furkin and Mauricio were still trying to dodge the missile. However, the control joke was locked. The missile hit the machine on its left wing. 
The cockpit was filled with the repulsive odor of the burning plastic wing. The plane was going to crash. Okay. And now we've got uh, Mustafa. Oh, this is a long, this is a very long, hang on just a sec, I want to, choo, 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 I, I need to change this. Here, here's where a new paragraph can be entered. All right, go ahead, Mustafa, right here, Manel. Mustafa, are you there? Okay, Zinyu, can you talk? All right. Foreza. Yes. Manel, go ahead. Yes, I can talk. Sorry. Oh, uh, that's Zinyu. I'm sorry. Uh, Foreza, you're next. Zinyu, go ahead. Okay. Pay attention, guys. Pay attention. Go ahead. Um, I'm reading the article. Manel? I'm not finished the article. No, no, just, just please. I haven't finished the I don't care. <laughs> just read it as you go. Manel, cut the cords. Oh, oh, the article is too long. No, no, Zinyu, go ahead. Ju just I gave read. the chance to the others. Okay, then you read that, and Fariza, could you read this paragraph, please? Me? Yes, you. Okay. Manel cut cords of the parachute. She was on an island. This would be a new experience for her. She had never been to an island before. Maybe she would have to live in that island for years. Will she be able to stand the role of wild life? Sure, she was brilliant, but not physically strong enough. And the young, uh, yes, she spent in the sky with developed machines, and the robots made her almost forget. How it feels like to have your feet on the ground again. Okay, very good. Let me do one quick thing. There. That makes it much easier to see. All right. Uh, let's see. And now we're going to um, for Khan. Now I'm going to insert a page break here. And that way the paragraph, the rest of it will be together. Okay. Okay. And I think... Hmm. I'm going to create another paragraph, all right? <laughs> okay. All right, Vrakan, go ahead. All of a sudden. All of a sudden, she heard some weird no sounds coming from the dark forest. It was like the roll of a carnivore. She was scared to death. Monster suddenly came up. It had four furious red eyes, three sticky tails, and long ears along with its red skin. She scampered towards to the dark forest. She raced, stumbled, tripped, jumped over the log, and ducked under the hanging branches of planets she has never be seen before. Whether they were poisons or not, that was her last problem. Her language wasn't enough to describe her fear. Manel! Okay. After a 30 mi uh, minute long uh, breakneck sprint, she stopped. Uh, the thing that stopped her was an enchanted castle. Uh, Manal felt like uh, she trapped in fairy tale. Fairy tale. Uh, with uh, mesmerized eyes, she had no option, no option but getting into the castle. She came across two pe uh, pe peasants planting peasants, be peasants, yeah. pe peasants planting uh, bean seeds. Uh, she asked that uh, she asked that where could she have fo found the king. Uh, peasants were uh, were skeptical about helping a stranger smells like a pig. But as a successful detective, she knew that uh, how to make up their minds. They brought her to the king. She told the whole story to the king. A story called the king's interest. Very good. The king's interest. Yeah. The king's interest. Very good. Mauricio. Well, in the meantime, Furkan and Mauricio were in the plane crash. They were still breathing, but couldn't move. Then they heard the sound of a helicopter flying over there. Over, over them. The, the helicopter landed just next to the wreck, wreckage. Six soldiers with a team leader were dropped off. Ra dropped off. The good. team leader had a fa fabulous, fabulous eye-catching beard. The name of the guy was familiar to them, Arthur, the husband of Manel. Soldiers pulled everyone out of the crash. 
Arthur walked to Perkin angrily. He had some questions for him. Where is she? He bellowed. Perkin was injured, and as they crashed, something hit his head. He was unable to say anything. We inserted GPS tracker on her back, Mauricio murmured. Arthur, Arthur grabbed his neck and cried. Give me her location. Now! <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, Mustafa, you back? Mustafa? Mustafa's gone. Uh, Zinya, you there? Can you read this paragraph, please? Zinya? Okay, now what I'm going to do, I've got to create another paragraph here because it's a logical spot. Uh, Farisa, go ahead. This one, please. While he has been searching her, Man Manel was still in the des desolate castle. There was something about that castle which was surrounded by some dangerous plants. These plants could affect a person's mind negatively, and that fluence made that person dumb. The same plants which he spectacled while fighting her way out the dark, misty, foggy forest. Manel was unfortunately one of the victims of these plants, and uh, who was then was then that she wasn't aware of the dumbness of her dumbness. <laughs> of okay. Her dumbness. Now and now, what this? Oh my goodness. Long. <laughs> As a normal result of dumbness, she t simply got rid of the GPS tracking device became, uh, because it, w it made her ear look ugly like if a cicada, cat, cicada yeah. insect was creeping on it. Okay. Now, <laughs> going to have to break this up for the because the ideas are separate. Thank you, Farisa. That actually is two paragraphs because you really have two separate ideas here. I'm trying to break this apart by ideas. We'll change this. You guys will change it, but that's where we are now. Okay, for Ken, that. That, without doubt, made the mission even harder for Furkan and Mauricio. Arthur was getting more fears, threatening to kill Furkan. Uh, if not, in four days, his wife is found. Nobody could stand his dreadful, thunder, thunderous, loud sounds he made when he was angry and hungry. The same goes to the smell of his breath, unbearable, trapped in the fear strings, starving for an idea, an escape, a way out. Luckily for Hurkan and Mauricio, an old, wrinkly woman with a lightful face appeared in the scene. Okay. My goodness. Um... Uh... Put it here. Manel, with only. Okay. With only one request and a great re a reward, the, the request wasn't impossible. She needed a ride from a spiritless, dull, and full of wreckage forest to one of the castle's outskirts, uh, where she is certain of the presence of their detective friend will be. Standing next to Furkan, Mauricio was wondering about uh, this pleasant yet odd coincidence, trying to anal uh, analyze the wind mantis and the hypothesis without even asking the old woman said, I need you as much as you need me, and I'm your last hope in this hopeless place. No offense was intended, intended ma'am. With his Colombian accent, the gentleman replied. Okay. Uh... Okay, let me break it here. And now we have, okay, the Colombian accent guy, Mauricio. But I have a question. May I? Perkin interrupted. Yes, go ahead, young man. Well, how will you do that? Why do you want to leave this place? I mean, your house, your chickens, your ducks, and your beautiful full of flower garden. It's the only thing which kept my faith lit all these days. Well, dear, this isn't my home. It has never been, and it will never be. I don't belong here. I was executed 
247 years ago by a two inches tall tyrant. The head chef of very scary, merciless car carnivores. Carnivores, yeah. Carnivores. Hopefully, your friend in that faraway island will be awake enough to tell you the story. Okay. Meliani, welcome. And if you could read this paragraph, please. Okay. And to answer your question, the one and only reason why I want to go there with you is because I want to dive peacefully under the sacred beach pine tree of my family. She grabbed her musical ball in a blink of an eye to show him the nature of the place and also their detective friend Manal running in the fast green feels like a careless with soul wearing a tailored long golden dress. Uh, the, the old woman said in dollar, for an Norcio couldn't believe their eyes. Is that Nano? No way, but say it simul simultaneously. Simultaneously, yes. Oh. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let me read because you had some trouble with some of the vocabulary. And to answer your question, the one and only reason why I want to go there with you is because I want to die peacefully under the sacred pitch pine tree of my family. She grabbed her magic ball in the blink of an eye to show him the animate picture of the place and also their detective friend Manel running in the vast green field like a careless free soul wearing a gold, a tailored long golden dress. Oh, the old woman said a dolor. Good word, by the way. Verkan and Mauricio couldn't believe their eyes. Is that Manel? No way, both said simultaneously. Uh, my gosh. What were you guys doing? <laughs> uh, okay, here, here, I can see it now. All right. <laughs> All right, uh, let's see. So that was Melanie. Miguel, can you read this next one, please? Okay, yeah. Uh, providing? Providing, yes. One? Yes. Okay, for providing them with a pair of mud. The old woman packed all her loved animals in a big wooden box and with the shiny eyes of Furkin <laughs> and the accurate usual procedures of a careful man, Mauricio. The airship took off, followed by the helicopter of Arthur Willing to plan their pillage, massacre, massacre and destroy all the Iceland which took his wife away from him. With his little advanced weapons brought from a farther forward time. Okay. The word, by the way, is massacre. You had it right the first time. Plunder, massacre. pillage, and massacre. Yeah. Sorry, nice. Kevin. Yes. Uh, there, there is a uh, period or a full stop uh, in the first line uh, before followed. The airship took off. And then the period. Yes, 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 I see it. Uh, what happened here, it looks like when it was typed, um, when it, like when it was typed, it a space was put in. Let me show you. Uh, where'd it go here? All right. You can see, now let me bring it up. Where you have your punctuation here, this little dot indicates a space. Um, like you have here, what you need to do, and this is our first lesson in punctuation, is at the end of a phrase or the end of a sentence, you do not have a space between the sentence and the punctuation. Okay? And we'll see that again and again as we go. But since you brought it up, Maurice, I, I figured I would mention it. Okay? Okay, sir. So, so you understand the error and, and what we do about it? Yes, sir. Okay, and yes, it took off. Now, yeah, here's here's a good spot for a paragraph. All right, where were we? Um, Miguel, you just read. Servette, do yes. you start with um, finally. finally? Yes, please. Finally, they reached the target place with different intentions. They landed on the ground. One was to kill every moving creature, another was to prevent that irrational destroying and save a dear friend, another one was merely relating 
a feeling of terrible homesick through a reunity, tracking down the weak signal, but depending more on the power of the magical ball, which made it easier. Okay. There's the thought. There it is. Okay. Um, Yilmaz? Yilmaz? Is that your name, sir? Hello? Mr. Matula? All right. Let's go to Fariza. Start with Arthur, please. Okay. Arthur realized that he forgot his bills on the heli. He should have taken every day in order, in order to control his anger. And his ugly anger, with, uh, which made he, his wife, Manuel, abandoned him in the first place. Otherwise, when um, an important disappointment could turn him to a measurable monster, turn him into something which he didn't want to show, at least not for now. <laughs> he wanted. Go on, go he on, wanted to have the, his third chance in case the second chance didn't pay off. He has a lot of plans, plans in a twisted, twisted. mind of twisted mind of visit. Mysterious. Mysterious man. When I read this, I thought, this is really good. <clears throat> yes, a lot of plans in a twisted mind of a bearded, mysterious man. <laughs> I mean, this kind of flows, doesn't it? Okay. <laughs> Let's see. I need to. Here, right here. Uh, so that was um, Farisa. For Khan, go ahead, right here. While all those ideas were flooding in his head, one man from his team shouted, Here we are, boss. They finally found the GPS in a small town, belonging to the castle. But where was she? Arthur, impatiently refusing to hear a single word from Furkan or Mauricio, hustled into the mayor's office. Yes, in that Iceland you could find everything unexpected from antique buildings to urban ones, from civilized people with dirty tuxedos, working in mines to ogres, driving Bentley cars to impress charming homeless princes. <laughs> oh, man! <laughs> All right, here's a nice spot for paragraph. And let's see, that was for Ken. Manel, Arthur. Okay, Arthur in uh, the mayor's office asked about the location of his wife. Where did you hide her? He's my property, not yours. More shocking words coming from Arthur's mouth made for Ken and Mauricio worried sick about their friend. Ma mayor was confused and didn't respond to him. As he was the indifferent attitude of, ma ma of the mayor, he flipped out. Arthur set the town on fire without any remorse. He had no difference than a monster. monster. Okay. Than a monster. All right. Okay. Hang on a sec. Yeah, this was actually a much smaller paragraph. All right, Mauricio. For Ken and Mauricio. For Ken and Mauricio were again in shock. But this time, they didn't stand there hep helplessly. They ran to the they ran to the airship, took out from it a huge elephant shape, mechanical device pumping lava to turn off the fire. Now how lava turns out a fire, I don't know, but I guess I'll find out. Um, Miliani, <laughs> start with Mauricio, please. Mauricio was aware of Arthur's plan, so he was ready in time to fight back and turn it over him. Furkan provided him with. The lava from underneath the sacred pitch pine tree, which seems to be the loyal supporter of people with wheels. But Arthur wasn't there yet. Actually, he left thinking that he left behind him a charred lamp like a dead marshmallow that caught fire and he pulled on and put it out until it's too late. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. The similes in this story, <laughs> like a cicada, <laughs> like a marshmallow that caught fire. <laughs> all right, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm enjoying this all over again. 
<laughs> All right, Miguel, but unluckily. Miguel? Yeah. M Miguel, yeah, you there? Sorry, I was muted. That's okay, but? Yeah, yeah. I'm here. Okay. But unluckily for him, luckily for the others, he was so wrong. Turkan whispered, his end will be with my hands. He was too fed up with how a person can be this selfish and devilish. Mauricio made another brilliant plan to exterminate Arthur. They put a bunch of wild animals into Arthur's room as Arthur was sleeping. Oh my god, Mauricio. <laughs> 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 You're evil. <laughs> okay. Let me. <laughs> you guys are really strange. Um, <laughs> so that is that was my Servet. No, that was a Miguel Servet. Go ahead. His end. His end was horrifying, stimulating absolutely no feeling of pity for him, because after all the brutal things he did, that was a fair punishment. Manel on the outside standing still knowing next to nothing about what was happening around her. Squeezing her brain to recognize the very familiar face of Furkan and very familiar voice of Mauricio and the very familiar stinky breath smell dominate all over the place. This is worthy of Monty Python. You know that, don't you? <laughs> um, okay, let me... Uh, I want to throw this out because that actually makes for another paragraph. All right. And uh, let's see. Yilmaz, are you there? Okay, let's... Uh, Farisa, you do this paragraph, please, but with... But with the tender touch of the uh, old woman back on Ma Manuel's hand, a head, in fraction of a second, he could retrieve what was the once lost inside her. Your intelligence, your priorities, priorities, and the most, most importantly, your second family, your loyal friends, knowing from knowing from them about your longer, courageous uh, adventures, wandering, <laughs> and also about Arthur, the poor and un uh, unwanted, miserable Arthur, was he with the great unforgettable. Indeed. Beard. Okay. And for Ken, tie it all up. Last paragraph. After the mess was scrapped from the battlefield, floors, walls, and ceiling, everyone lived happily ever after. The end. Dun dun dun. <laughs> oh, okay. Who wrote this story? What's that? Who wrote this story? Uh, let's see. Um, Manel, would you like to explain to her how this story came about? Uh, okay. Well, uh, we had uh, two classes of uh, making stories. Uh, Furkan came up with the introduction to a story, and he mentioned this Arthur character, and we expanded on his story, giving some random ideas, and we had to relate them to each other to make one coherent story. And on the second class, we had uh, the second version of the story. And we, with the help of uh, the, my other classmates, we came up with this twisted, everlasting, everlasting twist of Arthur. Everlasting <laughs> twist of Arthur. OK, mm -hmm. would anyone like to um, add to that? Let me see. I'm sure I saved everlasting twist of Arthur. Hang on. I will find it. I will find it. Because I was looking, but I thought... Hey, the selfish boy. Well, we do have um, the everlasting twist of Arthur around here someplace. I know I saw it, and I know I saved it. But this is going to give us something to work with. Um, and this puts us all the way back at the beginning. So let's do that. Let's take a look at this. Um, hang on just a sec. That's Manel and her friends on the... I don't know what happened to Everlasting Twist of Arthur. Well, it doesn't matter. Would anyone like to add to what Manel said? 
Would anyone it's like to add? Team. Yeah, it will continue. Yeah. This is a team story. This is a team story. Anyone else? It was um, for Khan and Manel and Mauricio and um, let's see. Uh, I'm sorry? Zinyu. Zinyu, yeah. Masafa. Yeah. Uh, anybody else? I mean, that, we had a full class. Uh, and Thomas, I guess. Yeah. Didn't see like the first story. Okay. Well, let's go ahead and get started on this. Um, let's start out by, you want to go ahead and change the title, which is what? The Everlasting Twist of Arthur. The, now watch this. The Everlasting Twist of Arthur. Okay. I have what, a question. Yeah, sure. Uh, those are going. Are those going to be chapters of a big story or or or, or short stories? This is going to be whatever you guys decide to turn it into. What I'm going to suggest we do right now is go in and starting line by line, um, change and 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 amend the grammar, the punctuation, that sort of thing. I'll save it right before this class is over. And I'll need to I'll need to put it on a site someplace. Um, I know for kind you tried to show me how to put it up in um, in a Google uh, um, uh, chat or a Google room. Right. Well, what I can do is I can actually send this to you if you like, and then you put it in yourself. Is that okay? Yeah. Let's let's do it that way. Let's not have mistakes. All right. Let's take a look at this sentence. Okay? We have a couple of situations here. We have, can anyone take a look at this, read it, and tell me what the error is? You don't need to go in. Okay. Would you guys agree? I, I don't understand the into. Okay. Going into is right. Going into, going to, to go. uh, placing an object like a, a ball into a, a case or something like that. If you are moving, well, first of all, let's deal with going into the room. Into going the room. Do we get rid of going? Do you guys all agree? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Everybody. Yeah. Okay. I also agree. What you've got is a participle here that has no business being there. So into the room, into the room. Okay. So now let's go to. Uh, Manel says rushed, and why is into? Is no, that correct? No. Yes, yeah, it's clear now. I, it's clear. Okay. Because yes, the the into messed you up. Is that correct? I I find it correct now. Okay. Now, all right. Let's go back up. And when we say understand, um, what do we mean by that? To make clear. To figure out or to check out. Okay. Um, to check out, to figure out. Uh, Foresa? To make clear. To make clear. Okay. Understand, the word understand usually means when you have received an explanation. So I might say the verb going does not belong in this sentence because it's a participle mixed with a past. It makes no sense. So it doesn't belong. At which point, like Manel said, oh, I understand. Based on the explanation, it makes sense. That's not what you're trying to say here, is it? What are you trying to say? Figure out. Uh, figure out. Um, what okay. else? I'm sorry? Check out is better. Check out. Um, okay, figure out, check out. No. I'm sorry? No. Do you realize? 
to realize. Now, realize is when you suddenly, very quickly understand something. I realize. Um, what about um, find out? Find out could also work. No. No. It, it, to know, that would be more like understand. Okay. Give me. Tell me what would cause Manel to walk into a room, to go into the room. To know. To know. Noise. No. Uh, there could have been a noise. What? Uh, what's that, Farisa? To know what's going. Okay. Well, and again, give me some backstory here. Manel didn't just suddenly say, "Oh, well, I'm going to rush into the room." Right? No. Something caused her to do it. What was it? It was the noise. Um. Okay. So let's say it was a loud noise, a big crash. Okay. okay. If it was a big crash. She's not there to understand. She is to either find out or to learn or to see. Okay? Mm -hmm. Each one of those implies a comprehension of, of learning something quickly. Okay? So we've got find out, we've got learn, and we've got see. What word do you guys want to use? I think uh, for me it's C because uh, she she heard noises of uh, a new invention she which she has never seen before. Okay. So, so she okay, Mikel, Mikel, uh, blah, blah, blah. Manel says C. All right. Anybody else uh, have a different idea or would like to suggest something? I agree with her. Okay, for can agrees. Um, find out. This Okay, Mauricio says find out. So we've got see and we've got find out. No, it was uh, Servette. Sorry. Uh, Servette, I'm not. sorry. Servette, that's fine. Mauricio, what do you say? Uh, yes, to see. Or to, to yes, to see. To, 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 to find out. To find out, it sounds interesting. Yeah. Okay, make up your mind because we've got to pick the word. <laughs> uh, do you want see or find out? We've got two C's and one find out. To find out, I think. Okay, two C's, two find out. All right, uh, let's see. Uh, Meliani, what do you say? To realize. I'm sorry? To realize. Realize. Two C's, two find outs, one realize. Okay, <laughs> Miguel. Um, find out. Let's see. Yeah. Two C's, three find outs, one realize. Sergey. Sergey? Yeah, yeah. Two C's, three find outs, one realize. What do you say? <laughs> I just uh, connected and I, I can't say. Okay, that's fine. Foreza, what do you say? Um, to see me or to know. I... Okay. Well, pick. So if it's if it's if you say C, that means we have two C's, three C's, three realize. No, three one find minute. outs and one realize. <laughs> now, I am going to drop realize simply because that's the lowest vote getter, and let's go around again. This time, I'm going to start with um, Fariza. C or find out. C. C. Manel, Afriken, see or find out? Find out. Okay, one C, one find out. Manel? C. Okay, two C's, one find out. Mauricio? Uh, find out. So it's two C's, two find outs, two finds out. Meliani? C. Meliani, I didn't hear you. C. <laughs> C or find out? See? Okay. Three C's, two find out. Finds out. Miguel. Find out. Three and three. Sergi. Let's be find out. You like find out? Yeah. Okay. Servet. Find out. All right. Let's go with find out for the time being. We can always revisit all of this, but for now it is find out. My friends, you notice we just spent 
five minutes deciding one word, okay? To find out which one we will use. Yes, <laughs> well, in this it would be to understand, but okay. Now, I want, let's take a look at this next sentence. For Ken was standing next to a strange vehicle. Okay? Oh. Any changes there? Let's start by... Um, uh, well, for Ken. Yeah. Is there anything wrong with that sentence? I don't think so. Can anyone see anything? No. Okay. I don't see anything wrong either. Okay. Now, there's certain composition issues, but grammatically and with punctuation, it's fine. Okay. And notice you've got your um, past participle here, which says that Furkan was standing. He had stood there before she got there, and he was there when she got there. So it was a continuous action. He was standing. Perfect participle. Okay. Good job. Now, notice one other thing you can see that I added two spaces after the period. You see? Yeah. And the reason I do that, and, and this is me. There's different rules of composition. This is the one I use, which is a little old, but I like it, which is after a sentence, you put on two spaces and begin the next sentence. It helps you keep the sentences straight in your mind which means we're going to have to do the same thing here. You see? All right. Why do we use dots instead of spaces? This is just, for me, a graphic representation under Word. Let me show you what it looks like without all that nonsense. You see? Yes. And you can see, let me shrink this up a little more, how the sentences, and this is just pictorially, a little more obvious, you see? Let me eliminate a space and look at this second line. We've got one divided sentence here and one sentence here. Just on the eyes over time, it's easier to keep it more separate. Does everyone see? Mm -hmm. Yes. Does it make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay. And this is a really nice thing to use. All of you use Microsoft Word? No. No? I use LibreOffice. It's free, free version of Microsoft. Okay. Open source. It may have the same properties um, as this. I just like words. So that's why I got it. Um, I liked Amy Pro more. But you see right here, I'm going to make this bigger if I can. Much, much bigger. Ah! You see this um, funny-looking yes. thing that I'm pointing to? Yes, I have the same thing. Yes. This is your paragraph marker. And when you click on that, all of a sudden, you can see where the spaces are, spaces between words, spaces between sentences. It's easier for you to see what's going on. Does that make sense to you guys? Mm, yes. Yeah. Yeah. It's just easier to see. Now, this is Kevin. Um, until such point as someone tells you otherwise, for me, do it this way. Mm. Now. It looks more complicated to me when you put dots. It makes it difficult to read, difficult to notice. Okay, we'll take it off then. Because when you put this, it's, I don't notice the uh, commas, dots. Yeah, a lot of people agree with you. They have problems with that. So I'll take it off if you guys want me to. But as an editing function, it's really quite good. So, well, let's continue. Um, however, there was a problem. And we have our two spaces here. Okay? Is that okay? Yeah. yeah. Okay. How about this one? A part of the machine was not properly working properly, and that could endanger the flight. Two errors you can fix with one thing.
just removing that. Yeah, you could do that, remove that, and you. So you would say, a part of the machine was not working properly and could endanger the flight. Okay, or you could put your that back in, and you put in a comma because you've got to have your pause. Either one is okay. Um, for now, how about we simply get rid of that? Is that acceptable to everybody? Yeah. Okay. So. Excuse me. Yes. Uh, yes. If we want, if we want to to put more drama, so we can we 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 should add the comma, right? Well, it, it's really you, you need to get a common style. Um, I think it sounds stronger to say a part of the machine was not working properly and could endanger the flight, that you don't need that reflexive pronoun uh, because it's understood. And since it's already understood, I don't see any need to repeat it. Uh, in fact, I think it takes away from what you want to do. I understand. Yes. Is it, yeah. Now, mind you, this is your story. It's not mine. And when we get done today, I'm simply going to save it, and I'm going to send it to for Ken, and I hope he'll be able to get it to the rest of you so you can all take a look at it and suggest some changes for when we meet next week. Yes, yeah, but you, you, are, you are our advisor. Of course I'm I am. The leader of the <laughs> No, 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 no. I'm not the leader. I'm the advisor. <laughs> of this, of this uh, enterprise. Yes. enterprise. Um, I, I will advise and I will coach, uh, but, but that's it. <laughs> now, let's take a look at this. Um, uh, let's see. Only one man in the world could solve this problem. He was Professor Mauricio. Okay? And then right away, Mauricio finds the broken part. What, was he standing in the room at that time, or did they have to go get him? They had to get go get him. So he wasn't there, is that right? Yeah. Okay, so when did he get there? Uh, can we say... <laughs> He was Professor Mauricio, who found the broken part, found the broken part and fixed it. Well, there's a couple things. Mauricio found the broken part. The question is when. According to this paragraph, it implies that Professor Mauricio wasn't in the room. And for Ken says he came later. Is that correct for Ken? Yeah. Later. Like, later when? So let's try this, guys. Maybe just later. Let's simply cut this out. I'm going to put it down here for a minute. And get the number of spaces. So now it says, only one man in the world could solve this problem. He was Professor Mauricio. OK. For Ken knew that Mauricio had profound knowledge about these kinds of devices. Is this the only one of this device in the world? No. Yeah. It's a flying machine and it's an invention, right? Yeah. I suggest that it might be this kind of device. You see? Yeah. Now, again, in, in English and in usage, this is a very, very common um, stylistic error that non-native speakers make. Um, it's a question of consistency. Okay. So, let's look at it. However, there was a problem. A part of the machine was not working properly and could endanger the flight. Only one man in the world could solve this problem. He was Professor Mauricio. Okay. Uh, 
yes, could I, yes. Could I, could I say something? Uh, I, well, it's it's lovely to see our name all the time, but I suggest to 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 replace to change. Perkin knew that him instead of Mauricio because Mauricio all the time. It's, it's okay. It's so instead of him, why not he? Uh, but he he had yes. because. This is basically an independent clause. He had profound knowledge. This functions as a subject, not as an object. And the object would have been him. The nominative, the subject, is he. Like, for Ken knew, he had profound knowledge. Each one, each one stands, could stand alone as an independent clause. Now, there's a lot here, guys. <laughs> Only one man in the world could solve this problem. He was Professor Mauricio. Now, there's a couple of ways we can do this. This it, should act... I'm sorry? Is it only one or the only one? Well, you could say there, there's different ways we want to look at it. And let's, let's talk about how to structure this sentence. So I'm going to move this down. You could say, for example, the only man in the world who could solve this problem was Professor Maurice, I can't spell for beans, more Ah, oh, who are I C I O? See, so that's one. The only man in the world who could solve this problem was Professor Mauricio. You could also say, um, there was only one man in the world. could solve this problem and that would be Professor Mauricio. You see? Yeah. So there's several ways to word that sentence and each one of them to word that stronger. But guys, I have some terrible news. I have to teach a class. <laughs> In fact, the class has started. So uh, guys... I really have a question. What's that? What are we going to do next week? We're going to are keep we looking a at story? this. Oh, okay, um, cool. Do you want to create a story or do you want us to work on this? On this. Yeah, let's work on this first. Let's work on this and maybe talk, toss around some ideas.